Hello guys, welcome back. Now this is going to be a very, 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 very serious video. And it's going to be about a person that I have a lot of respect for in terms of, um, in terms of how brilliant they were, they were as a, as a strategist, as a military man, as a commander, uh, Konstantin Rokossovsky. The brilliance of Konstantin Rokossovsky. Now let's, let's, let's take a little step back. Let's start from the beginning. Let's really, really give a comprehensive review of Konstantin Rokossovsky's life and see how he was received by the public. Uh, let's look at Operation Bakrashion. Everything is going to be looked into in this video. Now, Konstantin Rokossovsky was born in Velik Veliky Luki, a small Russian town not far from Skov. His father, a man of Polish origin, was a railway machinist and his mother was a R Russian school teacher. Now, there's some accounts that people say that he's Polish and we're going to get into the Stalin purges and we're going to get into, uh, you know, we're going to get into everything in this video. Now, during, during World War I, he joined the Russian regiment that moved through Warsaw to the west and he was almost 18 years old by then and he was warmly welcomed by the regiment. So, the fact that he started as a private soldier at the bottom, at the bottom, he started at the bottom. He was nothing. He was nobody. He was nothing. He was a nothing. He was an absolute nothing. He was nothing, you know? But due to his brilliance and military talent, courage and leadership, he became a junior non-commissioned officer. Don't you think that's crazy? Don't you think that's brilliant? The fact that he was able to maneuver through the ranks and able to become a non-commissioned officer. Like, how many people do you know that would be able to join the Russian army, join World War One, and move through the ranks from being a private soldier to becoming a commanding officer? I don't know that many people. That's why it's so fucking brilliant. Now, he did that until October 1917. And then Rokossovsky, he joined the Communist Party and he entered the Red Army. Step by step, the young and ambitious man advanced to the rank of battalion commander. He played an active role in defeating the White Guard, including the troops headed by Alexander Kolchak. For his outstanding results, Rokossovsky received the Order of the Red Banner, which was the highest military decoration in Soviet Russia. So the, he was brilliant. This this. I don't think there's anyone that would that would um, argue against that. The dude was a brilliant officer, excellent, and he married Julia Barmina in 1923. And in 1925, their daughter Ariadna was born. After two years of studying at the Higher Cavalry Commander School, Rakosovsky was invited to serve as an instructor in the Mongolian Army. I mean, that also speaks to his brilliance again. The fact that he's able to be... Look, he was born... Like, he was like, what? 20, 25, 30? When he was in 1925? In August 1937, Rokossovsky was falsely accused of having connections with the Japanese and Polish secret services. Yeah, probably from Leventi Beria. He was... Leventi Beria was Stalin's hit, 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 hit dog. Yeah, Leventi Beria. That dude, man, that dude is, you know what I'm saying? Stavka, you know what I'm saying? He was the head of Stavka, right? Leventi Beria. He was the head of Stavka. He was the head of the... Dude, that guy, Leventi Beria. Ooh. Ooh, he was Stalin's secret police chief. Stalin's secret police chief. That guy, wow, that guy has killed so many people, dude. That also ties into that law where um, let other people do your dirty work for you, you know? He was the head of the NKVD, you know? Chief of the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs, you know? He was arrested, Rokossovsky was arrested, put in prison for three years in the roughly famous jailhouse the Crosses in Leningrad. Despite imprisonment and torture, he remained co courageous and denied all charges. In 1940, Rokossovsky was released. After meeting with Stalin, 
Rokossovsky was re-established in the Red Army and in the Communist Party soon after he was given the rank of Major General. You see, the only reason Stalin released him was because he needed Rokossovsky. He needed Rokossovsky. He, he, Stalin's not a stupid man. You know, he, un, he, he knew that he needed Rokossovsky. He fucking knew it. And when World War II started and the Nazis attacked the USSR, Rokossovsky commanded the 9th Mechanized Corps. Despite a lack of tanks, the troops headed by Rokossovsky wore out the enemy and retreated only upon order. Rokossovsky was promoted and became the commander of the 16th Army that was obliged to protect the Vol Volokolomsk approach to Moscow. It was an extremely difficult task due to a lack of soldiers and transportation. However, Rokossovsky managed to maintain an unbroken defense line. Rokossovsky proved himself as a gifted commander time and time again. The Nazi plan for a quick Moscow capture collapsed, but also it was because of the Siberian troops that were sent over from the, the Far East. You know, the Siberian troops were sent to the Far East to counter the Japanese threat of, the, of invasion, and they obviously needed to hold on to those ports on the Far East because they needed access to the rubber, transport, whatever. And in March 1942, Rokossovsky was badly injured by a shell splinter. He spent two months in a Moscow hospital. Crazy, crazy dude. He was the brainchild of Operation Bagration. And, and that was probably one of the best operations for sure. Rokossovsky went on to become one of the most talented Soviet commanders. He confirmed his status during the operation of Belarus's liberation, known as Bagration. It was the strongest attack in the history of both World War One and World War II. Dude, it was the fucking strongest attack ever. <laughs> Some historians believe that Stalin called Rokossovsky my Bakrashio. As soon as Operation Bakrashio had been successfully completed, Rokossovsky was given the Diamond Star of the Soviet Union Marshal. After us, Rokossovsky as commander of the First Belarusian Front participated in the liberation of Poland, which he considered to be his native land. Yeah, I mean, that's what I said at the beginning. He is considered to be Polish, and he is, right? At the end of World War II, Stalin ordered Rokossowski to reorganize the Polish army. Rokossowski became Polish Minister of National Defense and remained as such until 1956, when he became Minister of National Defense in the USSR, but only for a brief time. Look man, Leventi Beria, I think that guy is probably one of the worst people on the planet, but Stalin and Stavka, you know the thing is, what happened in World War II and the, fact, and, and the fact that Hitler was attacking the Soviet Union actually helped to bring them together instead of bringing them apart. For sure, definitely did. But anyways, that's all I gotta say. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video on Rokossovsky. And, you know, and I, and I hope you guys appreciate the video and like the video and subscribe. And I'm out. Peace.